This is the PlayStation 5. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm so tired. Oh my gosh. I was up till like eight in the morning editing that video for Xbox and now I'm here buying a PlayStation. Actually, the PlayStation's already in my house. It got delivered right before I left the house and I haven't even opened it yet. And I realized I'm so dumb. I didn't get games again. Kim's here, by the way. You look very moisturized. You're saying I look slimy. All right, I'm going in. Okay, here we are inside game. De definitely, actually inside GameStop. I mean, I feel like we should just take these games. They don't look. No, we can't just take the games, Kimberly. We have to pay for them. Look, I think he doesn't even know where he is right Kimberly, now. Kimberly, put them down. You can't do I'm that. I'm doing Kimberly, it. Come Dude, Kimberly, come back, Kimberly. Where are you? No, yeah. you can't. Yeah. Kimberly, that was so rude. What? I can't believe you did that. What did I do? All right, I'm really excited. I'm going home to play these. Go. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh god, oh god. I was trying to act like I was fumbling over the place and I actually missed two steps. Look at oh, what an exciting day we had ahead of us. <clears throat> first things first, I actually got two boxes from Target today. I ordered one from Target and then Target told me it wasn't gonna be here on the day. So this one I'm giving away. You have to like the video, you have to subscribe. Three games on, well that one, well, no it is. Three exclusives on day one. Three! Okay, well, let's, uh, I'm, I'm very, very amped up for this. Even the box is so much bigger. <gasps> That's what she said? Compare it to the Xbox box. Yeah. Holy crap! Get out of here, Xbox. You had your video. Oh, I hate when they do stickers like this. Because it rips the top. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, immediately I'll say, not that packaging means anything, but Xbox's packaging was presented so much nicer. The top of this box has the PlayStation controller, which I still, this is my first time feeling this new controller. That feels really good. Wow, I like the glass, plasticky glass buttons. I, I like that the PlayStation logo is the actual logo. It's something that the guy in the store taught us. Oh that I wanna, I wanna test. So you, you can't really see, but you zoom in, that's so cool. Like the actual grip texture is the circles and the squares and the triangles. A power cord, very exciting. Oh, what's in here? Why is this separate? Why do I gotta connect this myself? I realized I was buying a puzzle. All right, this is, this is all I care about. It was upside down. I couldn't tell. I am trying so hard not to joke about this looking like a router. This is gonna take some getting used to. Is the stand to stand it up? How about I look at the instructions? I probably should have. Super expensive console. Am I an idiot? I, for now, it's, I'm just make sure the hook is in position as illustrated below before attaching the base to the console. I don't get it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh. Easy, squeezy. Next step is to plug it in and pray to the Lord above that this is an easier process than my Xbox was. It was not. All right, I'm really running out of real, real, real estate over here. I need to plunk this bad boy here. I need to get to my bug snacks. That was the other one. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. I don't know why I was more worried about my Xbox breaking than my PlayStation. I, I always assume PlayStation's gonna work fine. HDMI 4, Kim, HDMI 4. What? Well, I look insane. Three hours of sleep, baby. Three hours of sleep, baby. <laughs> Nobody steal our internet. By the way, even though it's making me connect to the internet, internet right now, I don't need to. You can start the PlayStation 5 with no internet connection and start playing right away. Where you probably should be. <laughs> if you have a game disc, insert it now and we'll install it while you continue with setup. That's so nice. This is my first time inserting a disc into the next gen systems. Oh, well, I don't need Stan. Why? Because that's Australian. You can't use it here with your Express VPN. No. You know, if this video was sponsored by ExpressVPN, that would have been a really good segue. But, uh, 
It's not. It's sponsored by Bessie. We're outside now. Yeah, the new consoles are out, and all we want to do is veg out on our couch for three weeks straight, eating through a tube and peeing into a bucket, but that's gross. Sometimes you gotta just get outside and stretch your legs. That's why I love my Bessies. I've had these Bessies for a few months now, and they've become my go-to shoe. I wear them all the time. They're extremely comfortable, tough, but flexible, breathable, vegan, but you can eat them. I tried that. They look nice, and best of all, they're 100% waterproof. And I love this design. I got my own in brown. Can you see that? I don't know if I can stretch my leg high enough. Kim has her own pair, and the other day we went hiking into a pumpkin patch. I wore these bad boys the whole time, and my feet loved me for it. Sure, you know, I get my shoes a little dirty sometimes, but all you have to do is rinse them off with water, or you can toss them straight into the washing machine. They truly are an everyday sneaker, no matter where you're going. And right now, Vezzy is having an early Black Friday sale. So all you gotta do is click the link below. And if you're a dumb bum, like me, and you missed that sale, you can still use my code BEAT'EMUPS later to get $25 off your order. I didn't cut my hand. Thank you, Vessi, for sponsoring. Searching for your PS4? Why? It's here. Why? It. It's here! It's here, buddy! It's right underneath you! I just want to throw out there that with Xbox, you could just sign into your profile on the Series X and all your save files and everything was right there, ready to go. I mean, you know, we're not keeping score or anything. Can't recognize disc! Hold on a minute. It won't read the play the spider-man disc so i i tried putting it in the other way which felt wrong now i'm trying demon souls to see if that works yeah it's not reading this disc either okay so my playstation doesn't read discs this is not happening which way round do the discs go yeah it's definitely that way all right well um i'll uh check back in once i figure this out if i figure this out <laughs> So I tweeted about it because I legitimately thought my PlayStation was broken and all the replies immediately were, you're putting it in the wrong way. I swear I have footage on that camera of me putting it in the right way and it's still not working. So I assumed I was putting it in the right way. So I just kept trying to put it in the way that you would think it would go. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to go play some games. This is the PlayStation 5. And it's so freaking big. I could barely even fit it in the frame. It takes up the whole thing. Okay, so I'm an idiot. <laughs> but I got it working <laughs> by putting the disc in the right way. And I've now spent a day and a half playing tons of games on this thing. And I love it. All right, well, another intro down, another video where you make yourself look like an idiot. Good job, me. Guess I'll go get naked and have a shower. Oh no, I gotta make the rest of my video. I have now had a full day and a half with this thing. I've played a lot of games and I found a lot of little nice hidden secrets and features in this console. And I just can't wait to talk about it. So it's time for the fun stuff. <laughs> First, load times. I've been playing a ton of Miles Morales. And uh, as far as load times go, uh, there, there isn't, there isn't any. There's none. There's no, <laughs> there's no load, there's no load screens. So it's hard to have load times. The time it takes to load the game up and get playing is like 10 seconds. I haven't even timed it because there's no point. It's that fast. Just like with the Xbox Series X, there's an SSD running at full bore inside this beast, and I love it. Not all games will be as fast as Spider-Man, which is clearly optimized for the PlayStation 5. But even take Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a third-party game from Ubisoft, the load times between both the consoles are almost identical within seconds of each other. So it's safe to say both these consoles are just super fast. But what about the way the games look? So I've been playing mostly Spider-Man, but I also finished Astro's Playroom and I even loaded back up Ghost of Tsushima to see how that looked on the new console. I'm just totally blown away, especially with Spider-Man, which is by far the best thing I've seen from either of these consoles so far. It is clearly optimized for the PlayStation 5, taking full advantage of the hardware, and it looks breathtaking. You're breathtaking! Th thank you, Keanu, I appreciate it. But your game's not coming out for 
Yeah, I got delayed again, so. And a big part of why Spider-Man looks so great is ray tracing, which brings us to frame rates, Ki kind of, you'll see. So I can't talk about 120 FPS on the PlayStation 5 yet from first hand because the console only supports about five or six games right now at 120 FPS and I don't have any of them. But Spider-Man, for example, it can run at 4K 60 FPS in performance mode, or there's a fidelity mode where it runs in true 4K but only at 30 FPS, but it has ray tracing. Okay, just like in my Xbox video with Hertz, I'm not sure how many of you are care or even know what ray tracing might be. So, uh, I, I hate to do it again, but I, I gotta take you to Nerdy Wood one more time so he can explain ray tracing to y'all. I'm back. Dowel. <laughs> or a Pokemon, I just say my own name. Yes, I am Reverse Wood. My name is Dowel. Ray tracing. Okay, simply put, ray tracing is a technique that makes light in video games behave like it does in real life. It's actually pretty simple concept to explain. It works by simulating actual light rays, using an algorithm to trace the path that a beam of light would take in the physical world. Using this technique, game designers can make virtual rays of light appear to bounce off objects, cast realistic shadows, and create lifelike reflections. So in other words, no, I actually, I think you get it. Take any game that you've played before and add in realistic shadows, lighting effects, and reflections, and that game's gonna look a ton better and more realistic. It's a simple concept, but something that makes games look so much more advanced. All right, yeah, that, that was actually pretty easy. Thank you. He's very smart, but very boring at parties. Processing these lighting effects in real time is not like anything you've seen before. So even though yes, it's running at 30 FPS, which I'm sure we'd all like to be done with and we'd like to be at 60, it's an incredibly smooth 30 FPS for Spider-Man and it is so worth that trade-off to see the fidelity here. Gosh, if this is the stuff we're getting on day one, imagine two, three, four, five years from now. Okay, but now it's time to talk about the most exciting thing so far. This controller. When it comes to this controller, I need to be completely and totally honest. I was wrong. I was so incredibly wrong. I didn't get up in a video and say the words, I think this looks dumb and I'm not excited for it, but that's honestly how I felt. To me, both the console and this controller looked like it was just trying too hard. And Sony kept going on about these adaptive triggers and the haptic feedback. And honestly, I just shrugged it all off. Didn't really pay attention or didn't really care. I was freaking wrong and I'm so happy about it. This controller is more than just a new controller. It's something completely different. To start with, it feels expensive. It's weighted, it feels really nice in the hands, everything about it screams quality. But let's talk about the actual features that make this thing so cool. To start, just like in the Joy-Cons for the Switch, it has a rumble feature akin to HD rumble, where you can feel targeted vibrations in every single part of the controller. A great example for all of these new features can be found in Astro's Playroom, a game that was built to showcase what this console can do in every way, including what the controller can do. And the first example is it builds the controller out of pixels on the screen one by one. It stacks them up. You can feel the vibration move from the tip of the controller all the way up to the top, almost like you can feel it being built in your hands. Next, and by far the coolest thing, are these haptic triggers. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> they have forced feedback. So depending on what you're doing in a game, they can simulate the feeling with the triggers. For example, in Spider-Man, when you swing, you can shoot out a web and immediately the trigger goes down pretty easy, almost like a smooth motion of shooting out a web. But as soon as it hits onto something, not only do you feel that stick, but it also becomes super tight. Like the tension on the controller, it's almost like you're pulling down on a rope. It's really hard to explain, but awesome when you get to experience it. There's a microphone in the bottom, which is concerning. Is that always on? Is it listening to me? Is it gonna recommend me things on Amazon? Because I say, hey, I'm out of toilet paper. I don't know. But I was getting Zelda DS flashbacks, having to blow into the microphone to get things to spin and move in Astro's Playground. And you also have a speaker on it, which highlights certain actions or movements within games. Like when you're swinging in Spider-Man, it will come through the controller with a little But when all these elements come together in harmony, it really pulls you into 
the adventure. Again, I go back to Astro's Playground. There's a level where it's raining and you can feel the raindrops falling onto the controller, into your hand. Moments like pushing through a sandstorm where you can feel the vibration coming through the controller towards you. This controller screams the word innovation to me and it excites me a lot because it reminds me so much of Nintendo. Every time Nintendo releases a console, they go out of their way to try and find some new innovative way to have you play and interact with their games. This controller was inspired by Nintendo. It's Sony's way of doing something different and getting players to experience their games in a new way. There is so many other little nice things about this console that I could talk about that it could be its own video of just PlayStation 5 extra features. Like when you press the home button, you can come down here and go to music and you can play the tracks from certain songs that you have like bug snacks or the spider-man or just play anything straight from spotify also i love that when you're scrolling along your games in the menu it'll play music from each game and then they've upgraded the capture feature which i really like you can hit the capture button it immediately freezes the game you can go save recent gameplay save full video so you can save the entire time you've been playing so far or you can go the last 15 seconds 30 seconds five minutes obviously you have take screenshot but you also have start new recording if you wanted to just start recording your gameplay without having to record what you've done you can just start recording from now okay let's talk about games because we can. <laughs> PlayStation had a heck of a lineup for day one. We've obviously talked about this exclusive game, Spider-Man Miles Morales, but there was also Demon Souls and Godfall. Even the Sackboy Adventures whatever, which my GameStop didn't have and I had to order on Amazon and it's still not here. But that's four physical exclusive games launching on day one and very different games as well to appeal to a wide range of gamers. But on top of that, we also had The Pathless releasing digitally day one and Bug Snacks also releasing on the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on November 12th. But here's another big thing. Unlike with Xbox, which not only didn't get any launch day games, but we don't really even know when games are coming for the system. On PlayStation 5, we already know about a handful of exclusive games coming to the system in the near future. Uh, quickly, Temtem, a Pokemon-like MMO that we took a look at on my channel recently, is getting an early access release on December 8th. 8th, and then going into next year, we have Deathloop, Aragami 2, Ghostwire Tokyo, The God of War sequel, which will hopefully come next year, they said it will, and Horizon Forbidden West. So there's a ton of reason to buy a PlayStation 5 right now on day one, and there's even more reason when you look forward to next year. And on top of all of that, you also have PlayStation's new subscription service, which is akin to Game Pass, where you have a selection of games that you can play for, well, not for free, but for really cheap. And these games aren't no B-grade games, by the way. These are the heavy blockbuster PlayStation titles, 40 incredible games that you can play right now. On top of, of course, backwards compatibility. So whether you're looking for a brand new experience or to relive an old one, there's a ton to play day one on PlayStation 5. I have to tell you, I, I, every second I've had this console turned on and I've been playing it, I've had this smile on my face. Whether it's a full bore smile and laughing at how much fun I'm having or even just a smirk at the little features I'm finding. I've just had so much fun and so much pure joy from this console that I've never really gotten that level of excitement from a home console before. This is a feeling that I typically get from Nintendo systems. It's really a shame they're so hard to find because oh my gosh, if it's not the perfect Christmas present. In my Xbox video, I said that the Xbox feels like a very powerful, sleek, gorgeous, high-end PC, and it still does. The PlayStation 5, even though its specs are almost identically comparable, it doesn't feel like a cut-and-dry, sleek, high-end PC. It feels like a gaming console that's just begging to have games played on it all the time. Maybe it's just me. But I see the PlayStation 5 as a console that has managed to merge two entities that until now were very separated in the world of gaming. I've always seen Nintendo's consoles to be the innovative, creative, fun console. What weird wacky things are we doing over here with Nintendo when it's not necessarily about how powerful the console is, that doesn't matter. But then with the Xbox and PlayStation, all it's ever been about really is power. The PlayStation 5 mixes those realities. 
Not only do you have an extremely impressive console that looks and plays things as good as you're going to get anywhere, but you also have this innovative creative side that is just begging to have new experiences played on it. It's a hybrid of innovation and power. Thanks for watching the video. Now that I finally got through my reviews of both of these consoles, I'm gonna be sat here a lot playing all of these games and trying to get reviews out. Like it, subscribe, check out the sponsor Vessi. Links down below, I'd really appreciate it. Help support the channel. Stop by my Twitch stream. Oh yeah, I have a Switch. I forgot I have. I'm gonna have to play my Switch again soon, huh? It can wait a little longer.